For the final example here, we're going to kick it up a notch. And there's only one other thing we can do, which is to put context in with labels and units and things like that. Now remember, I mentioned way back that sometimes we may have results that have units. Well, this is the page where we're going to see it. Right? So we're going to prove that sometimes that can happen. OK, so let's see what we've got here. We have the combined, um, which is a verbal and quantitative reasoning score, um, the GRE. GRE is an exam. It's like SATs, but it's, the, it's an exam you take at the end of your bachelor's degree if you want to go on to graduate school. So it's, I've actually taken it, if you're interested. Um, so the, the combined scores are normally distributed with a mean of 1066 and a standard deviation of 191. For each part, we're going to shade and label appropriately, give four decimal places, all that good stuff. Okay, so what proportion or combine, of combined GRE scores are between 800 and 1,200? All right, well, let's see here. Just for starters, I know that the middle is 1066. Right? I could put that in all of these graphs for starters. Now, I know that it's telling me the scores, 800 and 1,200. Now, let's think about this. It's giving me X values, right? I know the X values. I'm looking for the proportion. What proportion? That's my question word. So I want to find the proportion. So I'm doing number three right here. OK, so I'm going to put in 800 over here. You figure a standard deviation is about you know, roughly 200. So 800's kind of over here. 1,200's over here. If you're working in pencil and you do it wrong, you can always adjust because StatCrunch, of course, shows you a picture of what it looks like. And you want to go between, because it said between. <laughs> so I'm going to shade between them. All right, fine. Lovely. So um, we're going to stack crunch. We're going to put in the x value and find the value. Oh, sorry, that was my, again, I'm uploading videos in between. So I forgot to switch it back. All right, so first thing I'm going to do is change that. So it's 1066, 191. You always have to change the mean and standard deviation for every problem. All right, I'm going to do a between one because it said between. So I'm going to click between. I'm going to put 800 over here and 1,200 over here and then say compute. And there we have it. Eh, my picture is pretty good. I could maybe have gone a little bit more on the left, but there you have it. OK, so then the probability that 800 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 1066. Oh, not 1066, 1,200. Sorry. I looked down at the paper. 1200 is 0.6767. Four decimal places for probabilities. So I did that. That's four decimal places for the probability. This is a probability answer. We're good. Lovely. Now they said proportion. So if you want to change that to 67.67% uh, because that's usually how we talk about proportions. That's fine, but it's not strictly necessary as far as I'm concerned. All right, now suppose the Department of Psychology at Columbia University in New York wants to accept only the top 10% of test takers. Ah, so top 10%. I know a percent, right? I have the percent, it's known. I'm looking for the score, the x value. This is a number four. All right, and let me just say for the record that the units on this one, I didn't, I don't know if I put it anywhere. I should have mentioned it. I'm gonna say the unit is points. I'll probably change this so that it says that for future. So if you, if you take this in another semester, it probably will say points on there. <laughs> so both of those should say points, points. I will fix that so it says points. Okay, so let's do this. This is a different one. So the top 10%, Columbia is prestigious. So they're looking for this score. They want to know their cutoff score, right? They want to know what will demark the best of the best. And they're only interested in you if you're in the top 10%. The top is key because that means you're over here on the high side. Top 10%. If you want the bottom 10%, that would be over here. Top 10% is over here. All right, so this is a standard, not a between. There's only one value here. So I'm going to change this to 0.10, right? No, incorrect. All right, so that picture doesn't match our picture. 
That's because I didn't change it. So let me make it 0 0.10 again, but I've got to change this to a greater than. Greater than makes sense because it's a top 10%. So again, make sure that your picture matches what you think it should. It should be shading the top 10%, which it does. And there you have it. So the value is actually inside that parentheses. X, oops, sorry, X is greater than or equal to 1310. Now, they said for these ones, um, let me do this in pink, one decimal place for the scores. So we're only going to do one decimal place. So 130.10.8 equals 0 0.10. The 0, 0.10 is not the answer. We knew that to start with. What we wanted was this score right here. So this the score is actually, uh, let me do it in pink here. It has a unit. Um, if you wanted an interpretation of this, you could say, you know, I didn't ask this, but let me just kind of mention this. 67% of scores are between these two values. Or you could say 10% of scores are above this value, right, above 1310 points. Matter of fact, let me, let me write those in real quick. There we have it. That's kind of a review. If you remember, we had that analysis of probability as a proportion or a probability way back in section 7.1 when we talked about it with the giraffe problem. If you remember the giraffe that we were dealing with at the end of 7.1. So you can interpret it as a percentage or as a probability. Me personally, I find it always easier to interpret as a percentage, but that's just me. So we had this example here with the giraffes. That's what I'm doing right there. Um, I didn't ask for it, but I think I'm going to add that in just for fun. Um, so in later semesters, I think that will be there just as a little review of how to interpret these values that you're finding. Oh, and I should have put points here. Sorry. Points. Got to have units. Right? PTS stands for points. <laughs> All right. I'm definitely going to add that in. All right, next, what is the percentile rank of a student who earns a combined GRE score of 1,100? Okay, so you know the score is 1,100. So let's think here. I know that the middle is 1066 right here, and I know 1,100 is going to be real close. Right there, there's 1,100. Matter of fact, it's probably closer than that. All right, so percentile rank is the percentage below. We learned that before. That's the third time we've seen it in this section. So that's why I'm shading to the left. Okay, so then let's think here. I need to find this area. I need to know what this is so I can make it into a percentile. So let me go back to my handy dandy stat crunch. I'm going to switch it to a less than and I want it to be 1100. I don't know the area. The area is unknown to me, but I know the X value is 1100 points. There you have it, 0. 0.5706. Okay, so let me write that up. So the probability that X is less than or equal to 1100 is 0. 0.5706, which we would round up. So you think that's the answer. It's not. The answer is actually P57 or the 57th percentile. And again, I didn't ask for this, but let me throw in a little interpretation piece for it. I think I will ask <laughs> in the future. Okay, so um, a student who scores, well, let me, let me put it this way. 57% of students, or of GRE scores, are below 1,100 points. Sorry, my word points got strange there. And again, it didn't specifically ask for it. You could also get into, you know, a student who scores an 1100 scored better. I'll mention that. A student scoring 1100. 
this is kind of an old school interpretation. This is what we learned in chapter three. I'll, put, I'll label it interpretation number two. A student who scores 1,100 points um, scored higher than or did better than 57% of test takers. Right? We learned that kind of back in chapter three, right? That if you score that value, then you're better than 57% of the people that took it along with you. That's the word scores, by the way. That's an O. <laughs> there you have it. All right, last but not least, determine the combined GRE scores that determine the middle 95%. Okay, so uh, let's think. We know that it's going to be symmetric. The center line is 1066. What I'm looking for is there's an x value here and an x value here, and they're going to be symmetric, and the middle is going to be worth 95%. So that central area is 0.95. It's probably illegible to make that darker. Okay, well, I'm just going to have to use the between function. So let me click between. All right, and I'm going to tell it over here, my area is 0.95, enter, and there we have it. So the probability that, um, let's see, what is this, 691, 691.6. Oh, Remember, because it wants one decimal place for scores. Four decimal places for probabilities, one decimal place for scores. So 691.6 is less than or equal to x which is less than or equal to 1440 point that's going to round up I bet that looks like a five after that three there it is so I clicked in that box and I kind of moved it over so I could see so there's a five there so that's going to make it 1440.4 equals 0 0.95 so the scores that are actually the answers is this one right here and this one right here and both of them would be points right they both are units so the x values are uh, 691.6 points and 1440.4 points. PTS points. There's your answer. Z. There's two answers there. All right, so let me further interpret this. Just again, I'm going to definitely add an interpret piece to this for future. So let's throw it in there. Which would be that 95% of test takers. Or you could say 95% of GRE scores. It doesn't matter. You know, put in a context. GRE scores are between 691.6 points and 1440.4 points. Done. I'm going to add that interpret piece for future semesters. And I, I know it's in your worksheets, but it's actually kind of a review. We already learned how to interpret these pieces way back in chapter or section 7.1. So it's just a refresher of that same probability slash proportion way of interpreting these values. All right, I'm done there. I'm going to show TI-84 folks what to do. But if you're not wa using a TI-84, you can skip ahead or stop entirely. All right, T84 folks, so let's see here. So for the first one up here, that's a normal CDF one, right? Again, you're using number three, where you have X values and you're looking for it. So it's normal CDF. Oops, let me go back here. So second distribution, normal CDF, 800. 800, 1200, 1066, 191, paste, all good. So that's easy. Over on the right, you have to do an inverse norm. That's a number four, right? You have an area you want to find the x value. So that's an inverse norm. 
So inverse norm left tail area, or area in general. So you can use 0 0.10 on the new ones and then say 10, 66, and 191. So if you have a new calculator, you can do this. And you would just tell it, hey, that's a right area. Lovely. Paste. Enter. No problem. The old calculators, you're in a little bit more of a pickle. So you're going to have to do inverse norm 0 0.90, right? Because you need this area over here. 0 0.90, because it's always doing the area to the right or to the left, no matter what. So paste, enter. All right, then. What is the percentile rank of a student who earns a combined GRE score of 1,100? Okay, so that's inverse, um, excuse me, not inverse norm, that's normal CDF. So let me go, actually, I was going to do this on this calculator. So normal CDF, it doesn't matter, they're the same for both. It's negative 1E99 to 1,100. So this function is no different from the old calculator to the new calculator. There you go, you paste it in, you've got it. Right. This one over here on the right is the one that's the pain. So um, let me show you the new calculator first because it's so easy on the new calculator. So you go, yeah, let me move that out. Um, so clear this. Inverse norm, because that's an inverse norm, you're looking for the x values. So you say 0 0.95, 1066, 191, enter on the center. So that rhymed. Enter on the center. So you press enter on that and then you paste. And there you have the values. Lovely. The old calculator is where it's no fun because you have to know how much is in each of the tails. So you have to use inverse norm. But the problem is I need this area over here on the left. Let me just do it in purple. Okay, so let me get out of here for a second. 1 minus 0.95 is 0.05. So that's both the tails put together make 0.05. So then I have to divide that in two. So this is 0 0.025 and this is 0 0.025. So then I'm going to go to inverse norm and I'm going to say 0 0.025, 1066, 191, paste. Lovely. All right, the left one's not bad. The right one, unfortunately, I have to put these two together because it needs the area to the left of that right value. So I have to go back to inverse norm. I'm going to tell it 0 0.025 plus 0 0.95. Put them together, and that'll work. Right, because it's automatically doing left tail area. You have to have the area of everything to the left of that value. 